Welcome. Welcome everyone to Mass Bay Community College. My name is David Podell. I'm the president of the college, and we're delighted to host this incredible occasion, this uh, revolutionary occasion, one might say. Most of you uh, think of Governor Maura Healey as the 73rd governor of Massachusetts, but at Mass Bay, we think of her as our commencement speaker of, at our 2019 graduation ceremony. So we welcome her back to Mass Bay. And what's particularly uh, uh, gratifying for Mass Bay and for all the community colleges is her strong attention to the community college segment. She understands the power of community colleges to transform lives of individuals and of families, the power of community colleges to uh, contribute to the economic growth of the Commonwealth, and the power to meet workforce needs of this Commonwealth right now that are critical. So with great appreciation, and uh, respect, I welcome to the podium Governor Maura Healey. Uh, well, good morning and thank you. Uh, thank you, President Podell, for hosting us here today. It's great to be back on campus and it's great to see so many, many people out. Um, the Lieutenant Governor and I would say that this is this has been an awesome week. Uh, we have loved this week. It started earlier this week with the Lieutenant Governor in Brockton uh, making announcements about the repayment of loans for those who are in our healthcare workforce. We were able to stand together the other day to talk about uh, tuition equity, uh, which is so, so important in making sure that people have the opportunity to pursue an education uh, regardless of their immigration status in our state. And then to be here today to announce this program, Mass Reconnect, we're really, really proud of, uh, proud of, of this week and grateful to um, all who have worked so long to advocate for these policies and then to enact these policies. So um, thank you for that and thank you for the students. Uh, you're going to meet <clears throat> some, some terrific students here today who are what this is all about. Um, I mean, I'm going to recognize them. First, Danita Menz of Roxbury, who is pursuing a certificate in interior design. And thanks to Mass Reconnect, this program, she's now looking at an associate's degree. We have Nick Likas, who is a business administration major at Mass Bay from Framingham. He's got a goal of being a dental hygienist. We have Edgar Kassiri, who is currently enrolled in Mass Bay's mechanical engineering program and lives in Westboro, and Belkis Brady, who is enrolled in general studies with plans to transfer to radiologic technology um, programming. I want to thank each and every one of you for your commitment to education, for your perseverance, for your resilience, for your hard work, and your career goals. You represent the very best of our state. I also want to thank you for helping us get the word out about Mass Reconnect. Uh, we want people who are eligible right now to know that this incredible program and opportunity exists and we want as many people out there taking, uh, taking advantage of it. We expect to support as many as 8,000 students in this first year and we expect that number to grow in subsequent years. Uh, fundamentally, we know that this is a long-term investment, not just in these students, ultimately that redounds to the benefit of their families, uh, but it also is about an investment in our state. And as President Podell said, this is about making sure that we are meeting the moment here in Massachusetts, that we are meeting the moment and taking advantage of opportunities for tremendous individual economic mobility and growth, and also opportunities to drive a true economic engine in this moment. And so we're really, really excited about that. Uh, backing these folks is the most important investment that we can make for our workforce, for our economy, and for an affordable, competitive, equitable Massachusetts, which is something that our administration has talked about for a long time. Um, I want to acknowledge the folks who are in the room who are helping to make all of this possible. Um, let me begin uh, by thanking Nate McKinnon of the Mass Association of Community Colleges. Nate 
thank you for your hard work, including in getting all of our fantastic, or many of our fantastic presidents and representatives of our community colleges here today uh, from around the state. Because Mass Reconnect is a program that is going to operate in campuses across the state, which is super, super exciting. Thank you to, uh, to your teams for getting the word out and really looking to speed up implementation of this great program. I want to thank our uh, Secretary of Education, Pat Tutwiler, who you'll hear from, um, who works with a terrific team under Secretary Kate Donaghy, Assistant Secretary for Career Education, Bob LePage. We also have with us our Commissioner of the Department of Higher Education, Noe Ortega, and today with us, Chair of our Board of Higher Education, Chris Gabrielli. Thank you all for the work you do for our state. I said these programs exist because certain laws get passed. <laughs> and behind every budget number are people, are human beings. And uh, the terrific leadership in the Senate and the House understand that fundamentally. And so we're very proud to be here today, joined by our Senate President, Karen Spilka, who has made investments in community college and making it more affordable and accessible a top priority. So uh, welcome and thank you to our Senate President. Um, I also am uh, happy to be here in Wellesley, where we're joined by the representative of this district, who also happens to be a uh, terrific leader and chair in, um, in the House, Alice Peisch. Thank you, Alice. <laughs> Both the Senate President and the leader have been uh, tremendous advocates for education across any number of, of realms, and uh, we are grateful to them and their teams. Uh, speaking of Wellesley, we have Select Board member Lisa Olney and members um, of the Select Board as well as Executive Director Megan Job. So thank you for coming out and supporting. As I was suggesting, um, you know, education in Massachusetts, it has been our calling card. We are home to the first public school in the country, the first public university in the country, the first public library. That means something. And today, we honor that history by making this announcement, launching Mass Reconnect. We know that education as a calling card is also a competitive advantage. Welcome to Chair Joe, Senator Joe Comerford. Uh, thank you for joining us here today. Uh, but I say that because I, I do, I, I mean it. Education, this is our calling card. It's a huge competitive advantage for Massachusetts in this time because it elevates a workforce, it attracts employers to our state, and it puts us at the forefront of what is now very much a global economy. But to maintain that advantage, to lengthen that lead, we need to make the investments like the one that we're making here today, making sure that higher education is accessible and affordable to all. Right now, under this program, Mass Reconnect, and I, I just, this is cool, here we go. Oh, this is my effort at branding. You can stick this in the back of your phones. I'm gonna do that when I leave. I'm gonna peel that off and put that on the back because we want people to know this is a really, really great opportunity. Starting today, community college is free for anyone aged 25 years or older in the state of Massachusetts. Free. <laughs> Full tuition, fees, books, supplies, and more. And that's why Mass Reconnect is now one of the most comprehensive and accessible free community college programs in the entire country. Um, it means the world uh, to us to be able to be part of this and uh, I believe will have a transformative impact for thousands of students, their families around the state, for our workforce and our economy. Uh, again, I want to thank the legislature who worked so hard to lead on this and to make sure that Mass Reconnect from the outset was included in all budgets proposed and funded, funded at a level that meets this moment for our state with historic investments in education at every level. And so, uh, again, kudos to everyone to work to make this possible. Really, really excited about what this means. And 
help us, everybody in this room, get the word out today about what this program means. Because there are people who are on the sidelines right now who, for one reason or another, did not think that higher ed was a path because they have bills to pay and kids to feed and, you know, um, life gets in the way oftentimes. So many barriers. And our team, we're about eliminating barriers. Eliminating barriers and that's what Mass Reconnect is all about. So help us get the word out. Uh, with that, we'll have more opportunity and growth for folks around the state and our state will be so much the better for it. Thank you so much and I'd like to... You can continue clapping as we now call to the podium our Senate President, Karen Spilka. Thank you for that cheer. <laughs> it's great to have you, children of all ages, being here. It's great. Good morning. Wonderful. Um, this has been an incredible week, as the governor mentioned, and on Tuesday we celebrated tuition equity becoming law in Massachusetts. That is truly great, great news. Very exciting, long fought. <laughs> and that round of applause goes to all of you who really worked hard. I look out and see so many of you who worked hard over the years to get that into law. And here we are today celebrating yet another transformative education policy change that's happening right here in Massachusetts. That's more great, great news. So my question is, what are we celebrating tomorrow? And, and you know, over the weekend, there, there's so much. Uh, governor, I want to thank you and the Lieutenant Governor for uh, being steadfast supporters of education on all levels in Massachusetts and bringing us together today to celebrate such an important moment and introducing Mass Reconnect Wonderful, wonderful for the Commonwealth and uh, will really, I, I believe, send us forward and help us to be more competitive and grow our economy. It's, again, it's great news. All of you know why, otherwise you wouldn't be here. This is a wonderful moment. I also want to thank the outstanding members of your administration who have been advocates for education, Secretary Tutwiler. Commissioner Ortega, Under Sec Secretary Donahue, Assistant Secretary LePage, Board of Higher Education Chair Chris Gabrielli. Uh, wonderful work and lo look forward to continuing working with you on implementing all of these great policies and so much more. I also want to recognize and give my deep thanks, deep, deep thanks to Senator Joe Comerford. The, this, yes. <laughs> the Senate Chair of Higher Education, who has done so much work in higher education, in public higher education, in making this policy and other issues concerning free community college come to reality and uh, will leave such a mark on public higher education, so many other areas, I have to say, for that matter, and is continuing to work on these issues. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, I do want to thank Leader Alice Peisch uh, and our House colleagues that are with us today, Alice being a longtime champion of education as well. Um, this could not have been made possible without the presidents of our community colleges, so thanks to all of those who are here today, and especially uh, President Podell for being our, post and I, our host, and I have to say uh, the other part of Mass Bay is in my district, in Framingham, uh, so I have a special uh, partiality, uh, but uh, so I, I, I feel honored. I count him as a friend as well, so thank you very much for opening your doors as usual. I uh, want to th thank um, uh, the uh, Association of Community Colleges as well. Thank you so much for all that you do in helping bringing the presidents together in the community colleges and keeping the legislature on track as well. 
Uh, I want to also thank the, our students that are here today for being willing to tell their stories and make this a reality to us uh, and to hear how they got here and what this means to each one of them and to so many others across our Commonwealth. You are the reasons we are here today, so thank you, thank you. When the administration announced their Mass Reconnect proposal, I was very, very excited that we were all on the same page and that it was so obvious the administration's values and priorities and so much caring deeply about affordable and accessible higher education because everybody in this room knows education is critical and can mean many things to many different people. For some, it means a key to the middle class, a better job, a higher salary. To others, it means the ability to follow their passion, doing work that you love and that you dream about. To others, it means stability and a sustainable way to build and support a family. For many of our friends and neighbors who have immigrated to Massachusetts and who are first generation college students, education is a symbol of a new chapter and a brighter future. Now we are here today celebrating that in Massachusetts, no matter what education means to you, or where you come from, or what your dream is, you, if you are a resident who is, under, who is 25 years or older, you can come to one of the Massachusetts community colleges and make that dream a reality for free. Additionally, I am also thrilled that in, in the budget, the Senate's initiative was included in Survive Conference Committee, and I thank the House for that and the Governor for signing, that nursing students of any age can attend community college for free. And uh, that is something that we all are very excited about. Um, we need nurses. This will help provide nurses at all areas of healthcare, hopefully lower the cost of healthcare, and provide a, a key sector with the workforce that they need, and also enable so many students to reach their dream and their passion of becoming a nurse. Um, that is very exciting, but you know, just from, from our perspective, I do just want to mention that uh, it doesn't stop there. Um, from early education and care to higher in education, uh, there are investments in the budget to ensure that our students have the best chance to stay and thrive in public higher education with support and resources. And we will be working for free universal community college in 2024. So thank you, Governor and Lieutenant Governor. I, I am the product of public higher education. Just real briefly, I was supposed to go to a private university in New York. A uh, few days after high school graduation, my father declared we could not afford it. Uh, I wasn't going to be able to go to that school. He uh, would not fill out financial aid forms. There was stuff going on in my house, clearly. And, um, so I had already told the public higher ed that I wasn't coming, so I had to get, try to get back into those universities. And one of them opened their doors for me. And I look back, I still get the goosebumps because being a typical 18-year-old, when I heard that from my father, I have to say, my response was, okay, I'm not going to college then. I'll stay here and just, or just move away. I mean, it was, it was that reaction. By them opening their doors and letting me in, led me to a path to become a social worker, move to Massachusetts, go to Northeastern Law School, and be where I am now. Who knew in those days that this would have been the path? So I am a real firm supporter of public higher education and community college is the gateway for so many of our students and our kids who never thought they would be able to go to, to public higher ed or to higher ed. They could afford it, they were candidates, they would survive, they would thrive. This 
more than gives them the chance in so many of the other programs with early college and other supports. This is something that, that as the governor noted, Massachusetts is the hub of education. We need to ensure that we are number one in education, not only in K-12, but in public higher education, early education. We need a strong student opportunity plan for all of our students and all of our workforce. And this is very exciting to be here, here today with this. Um, you know, I think that, that uh, this is the start. It's something that we can all be proud of by being here. And again, I look forward to the implementation. I look forward to hearing from our students and all the other students who take advantage of this and to learn where they end up and all their successes over the coming years. So thank you very much and congratulations to all of you. Good morning. Good morning. All right. <laughs> so thank you. Uh, thank you all for being here uh, today. Uh, it's great to be back here on the campus of Mass Bay along with our, our family, our colleagues uh, from community colleges across the state, uh, and here celebrating such an important program, championing Mass Reconnect, which we know is going to have such impact. Uh, for those of you who I haven't had the pleasure of meeting, I am Pat Tutwiler. I'm the Secretary of Education. Uh, and as some folks here know, I spent the last 23 years honing my experience uh, and my skills as an educator, starting first as a history teacher in Boston, moving on to a principal, and then finally the last stop for me in K-12 was as a superintendent uh, in the Lynn Public Schools. Uh, through all of that, uh, I've come to a set of core beliefs, uh, ones that I hold dear and that have guided my philosophy as an educator. Uh, they're wrapped up in a phrase that was shared with me very early on in my career, and it goes like this. As a leader in education, you must love the student, the teacher, and the craft of teaching, none more than the other, but in that order. Uh, I share that with you to emphasize that love for students is at the forefront of this administration's approach to education. And I think that it's no more clearly demonstrated than with this program, than with Mass Reconnect. Mass Reconnect is a new opportunity, a brand new chance for adults over the age of 25 across our state to attend community college for free. In these uh, first eight months as secretary, I've had the unique pleasure of traveling around the state uh, and learning from, interacting with students, educators, professors, and communities about how our administration can deliver the high quality education that students deserve. I enjoy engaging with all of our students, as you might imagine, but I have to admit that the stories shared by our community college students have impacted me the most. Adult students understand what their education is worth. They have to be persistent, self-driven, and dedicated. They are engaged, dynamic, and eager for the chance to learn, but so many of them are limited by something outside of their control, whether that be an unexpected medical bill, a car payment, a new member of the family to take care of, or simply the struggle to balance the large lift of high, higher education on top of the work to care for their family. I've heard firsthand, unfortunately, just how many of our students in the Commonwealth for whom these challenges are the case. Today, things change. With Mass Reconnect, we're able to eliminate the biggest bar barrier to higher education, the cost of attendance. I have no doubt that Mass Reconnect will change the lives of each of the students who take advantage of this historic opportunity to achieve their degree. By championing those students forward in their chosen careers, our community colleges will help mold the future of the workforce of Massachusetts 
And thus, by investing in our community colleges and their students, the Healy Driscoll administration is investing in the future of the Commonwealth. I fundamentally believe that uh, our job as educators is to create the conditions for students to realize their dreams. I see Mass Reconnect as a concrete delivery on that promise. With this step, we're making it easier for every student to earn their degree and achieve the future that they dream of, no matter their circumstances, no matter their path. With that, and I had the great pleasure of meeting her uh, just uh, about 20 minutes ago in the, in the back room, uh, I'd like to turn it over uh, to our students, who are the reason why we are all here today. I know each of them have a dream that they've been working on. I hope that today they feel a little bit closer to achieving it. I'd like to introduce to you uh, Danita Menz and invite her to share her story. Hi. Hello. <clears throat> so, where do I begin? Um, I'm 38 years old, and I had been pursuing my education since I left Needham Public Schools in 2003. I went to college and was unable to complete because of financial setbacks. And I went into the workforce. I actually started working for the Commonwealth and I grew my career. I moved on to corporate America. But one thing I realized was I was hitting ceilings. A lot of opportunities were um, passing me by. I was being overlooked constantly. And I realized I needed to go back to school. I decided to do a career shift and in doing so, my passion is in interior design and plants. So I went into looking into this interior um, design program here at Mass Bay. I got pregnant and had a child. And then again, I ran into an obstacle of, okay, am I going to be able to finish this program because I have to make choices financially? And I feel like it's... Sorry, I feel like it's God sent because I had to take a break because of my child. And if I didn't, I wouldn't have gotten this opportunity. Um, so I got called and was told that I was eligible for this program, which is going to be life changing for me. Uh, excuse me. As you can see, it makes me very. As you can see, it makes me very emotional because I'm very appreciative and it's been a long road. And to have this financial burden lifted is amazing. And I'm excited for the opportunities that are going to open up and the things that are going to change my family. Um, I have a son watching me now, so you know, I always worried about how I was going to preach to him the importance of education if I didn't have a degree. So here I am, overcoming an obstacle that I can now be happy to talk to him about as he grows and encourage him. Thank you. I think Nick is next. I guess so. <laughs> uh, good morning, everyone. I want to talk to you a little bit about my journey. It actually started when I graduated high school in 2011. Uh, from there, I just kind of went on to these dead-end jobs with no real end result and no plan for the future. And this just was not the way to live. After years of this, I realized that and I started to make a change. And I knew that education was important to me and I valued, was important to me and I valued that. So I took the first leap 
and I enrolled in a dental assistant program. From there, I spent three years, you know, developing my craft and my skills, as well as my passion for the field, as well as caring for others. This was obstructed by COVID, which set me back four months out of work with nothing but time on my hands. At that time, I realized I needed something more. I took the leap again, and I enrolled at Mass Bay, which is the best decision I could have made. After I returned to work, after those grueling four months, I was given an opportunity to really advance my career. And at that point, I was given the role of general manager of my practice, which I was beyond ecstatic for. It was the best thing that could have happened to me. Of course, with this came a lot of responsibility, and I had to balance my personal life with work and school, and it was very, very challenging. At that point, I made a decision to step back, and unfortunately, it tore me apart, but I needed to pay the bills, and school wasn't gonna do that for me. Unfortunately, my grade suffered. It was the worst part for me. I'm sorry, it's just, the months really went by, and I realized I, I needed to get back whether it was gonna cost me, you know, my life in loans or whatever the case may be. And it, it was a tough decision to make, but I still couldn't come to the conclusion to go back. Unfortunately, a few months back, my mother passed away and it was devastating to me and it kills me today. But um, her battling through breast cancer, through Alzheimer's, through Parkinson's. It showed me that she was strong, she was resilient, and she fought back. And that encouraged me and inspired me to do the same. When I lost her, it was devastating, but I did find comfort and solace with my family, my friends, my fiance, who I'm getting married to in just six short weeks. I know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but um, just recently, I received a phone call from a campus administrator, and they told me something that lit up my eyes. And it was that I could come back to school at no cost to me through the Mass Reconnect program. I, I was so shocked. I was at a loss for words. But this provided me with the hope that I could go on and get my degree. And this was something, this was a long-term you know, goal of mine that I just felt like wasn't attainable after all the setbacks and obstacles in the way. But I knew when they told me that I could do this free of charge, that there was gonna be no hassle for me to pay back a loan or to, you know, paying tuition fees that I just did not have. I knew this was my moment and I needed to seize the opportunity and I needed to make this push and come back to school. This is something I'm very proud of. I can have an education that I can, as Danita said, sh you know, speaking to your children and, and sharing that wisdom and, and providing them the guidance to, to move forward and teach them that education is, is most important. This is something I'm very proud of. And I know my mother would be proud of this. My family is proud of this. And this is something that I truly want. So thank you very much. Thank you to everyone who's here. And uh, uh, I want to start with a little bit of an anecdote because I think it's important. I was telling the secretary before we got started, I said, you know, sometime in, I can't remember if it was March or April, I was driving home and uh, I get a call and on there it says Lieutenant Governor. 
And she reaches out and she says, you know, Noe, we got to make sure that the word gets out on this program and that we have a concerted effort to let everybody know. And we worked really hard in partnership with the community colleges to be able to do that. And we're surrounded by the messaging today, right? And I, I think we may have gone a little bit over a board with what we're doing out there. But the one thing I do recognize is this is a signal of a promise. And for many, when you read this, like the stories that we've been headed, uh, hearing today, this is also about making sure that people's aspirations become a reality. So I'm really, really pleased to be able to be here to celebrate the announcement of Mass Reconnect. And if I may borrow from what Nick said, this is also a celebration about resiliency. Resiliency that adult students have shown in being able to overcome all the obstacles that we've heard today. And I know there's a number of people in the audience here who have their own story about the things that they have to overcome and how this is going to help them. And so for me, it's important that each of you hear uh, that you matter. This policy says that you're important. And most importantly of all, it says that the Commonwealth needs your contributions in order to ensure our resiliency. And to me, that's a very, very important subtext of what's happening here today. With Mass Reconnect, we've opened the door for a number of people, and we constantly say this, it begins to move closer to fulfilling a promise, but the promise of getting you in is not enough. We have to make sure that you succeed. We have to make sure that whatever aspirations you have are matched before. This way we can fulfill all the promises and expectations you have of where you need to go, right? And so I'm pleased to say that immediately, to follow on the call that the governor gave us early, like express urgency that this is important because folks have been waiting for this for a long, long, long time. And I want to make sure that the department quickly begins to assemble folks to say, let's talk about what success means. In fact, we're getting ready to launch an office of success to make sure that students are successful when they enroll at our, our community colleges, that they move and they persist to completion. And that's a, another commitment that we're making to make sure we fulfill that promise to each of you as well. Today is a really, really special day for us to celebrate, but we do need help. As I think everyone has been saying, we've got to spread the word of Mass Reconnect. There's a lot of individuals here who are sharing their stories, but there's still so many more stories that we have yet to hear about how this program can change lives. And to all the community college presidents getting ready to welcome students, it's just a matter of weeks. I know you're working and tweaking your talking points on what you're gonna say to students. You can now say the community college is free for those of you who have been waiting a long time to do it. So let's just celebrate the students, applaud this program. Thank you, thank you to the administration, uh, the governor, and every single person who has played a role in making sure that this program came to fruition. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Good job for everyone today. Let me invite the governor back to see. Maybe answer a few questions. Um, well, many thanks to all of our speakers, to all who have joined the lieutenant governor and me here today. Um, we're happy to take questions on topic. Well, I think the commissioner just, just hit the nail on the head with that. I mean, thinking about students who have been left behind for far too long and for the longest and making sure that folks who are, who are so eager but for one reason or another just had a, had a detour in, in their pursuit of, of higher education, really important to bring them back, really important, too, in this moment when we talk about workforce needs around our state, growing our economy, it just made for a perfect synergy. And so that's why we targeted this particular program in the first instance. Again, we are an administration that is focused in prioritizing making higher ed, community college, accessible and affordable for all. Well, I'm grateful to the leadership in the Senate um, for coming forward with uh, this as a priority, to the House for, for also prioritizing investments in higher ed. And this is something that we proposed, when, when I was running, I proposed this idea, actually, Mass Reconnect, uh, because I believe strongly in its values and what it could yield for the state. So, you know, I think it, it meets the moment and there's a, it reflects a lot of work by a lot of people. Um, 
It was never about the students or the eagerness or the capacity, as you can see and as you just heard. There are so many people who are waiting for this kind of program, waiting for this kind of relief, and I'm just grateful to our legislative partners, um, to our community college presidents and their teams, uh, and to the work of our administration for making this possible today. Well, I hope it's something that everybody in the state takes up. Uh, you know, uh, numbers, it's an estimate of we want to see as many people who are as eligible for mass, mass Reconnect take advantage of the program. Simple as that. And so uh, I really do hope that people heed the encouragement today to get the word out about this program. It is great for people, great for families, great for economic mobility, great for our workforce, great for our state. Well, there are some other states who have adopted similar programs. I think uh, I'm really proud of this particular program and the way we've done it because we're covering more than just tuition and fees. We're covering books. We're covering supplies. We understand the importance of wraparound support services, and you know we want to make sure with an Office of Support, Office of Success, that we are setting students up for success, not just to enter programs, but to stay and complete degree requirements. And I think that level of intentionality um, is what our state is about, and we're really, really excited about that. I think it also is significant, the uh, across-the-board participation by our colleges and by so many from the employer community, so invested in seeing these students succeed and are ready and eager to take them on as employees. And so I think it's, um, it's a special moment that we're in for our state. Really, really proud of what we were able to do uh, with this. And we've also made important investments in a number of uh, initiatives around um, public higher ed. And you know, obviously, there's always work to do and more conversations to be had. But you know, we understand full well the importance of education and education as a means to creating opportunity, not just for individuals, but for their children and their grandchildren. And you know that's something that helped build this country. It's certainly something that is part of Massachusetts and our proud history here. Again, we were home to the first public school, first public college, you know, and first public library. And I think we understand full well also the right to an education enshrined in our Constitution, which is also something that other states don't have. So, all the more reason for people to move to Massachusetts, uh, grow families in Massachusetts, get an education in Massachusetts, grow a business in Massachusetts, because you know we're going to make sure that you have access to education, you have access to health care, and you have a team, and I mean that by team, both inside and outside of government, that understands what it means to make meaningful investments in our people. And that's why my money is always on Massachusetts. Thank you.